and welcome. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. I'm Mr. Keir from School Tech HQ and I want to share with you today two ways for how to create a bevel or curved edge on Tinkercad. You can create almost anything on Tinkercad. However, a question I get often is how to make an edge rounded or curved. To create a curved edge, we have to be a little bit creative. The object of this video is to cover the properties of an object, look at how to add a curved edge by adding, and finally how to create a rounded edge by taking away. And you can choose at the end which one you think is an easier method for you. So let's begin. Okay, so if we drag a cube over to our work plane and select it, we can see that we have this menu that appears with the options to select solid or whole, but also with some additional properties. For a box, you have the option to alter the radius, steps, length, width, and height. You can see that as I move them, what it does to the object. If we bring a cylinder onto the work plane and do the same thing, you can see that the property options that we can alter are slightly different. For a cylinder, we can adjust the sides, bevel, and segments. You can see that this changes all sides of the object, just like the box. With every object within the basic shape section, you'll be able to find some properties that you can tweak to alter the object in some form or other. However, this doesn't get us the curved edge we are looking for because what happens when you only want one side or only two sides um, or only a section of the design that you want to be, have a curved edge, not the whole thing? Well, that's where we have to be creative. So here are the two methods. The first method we are going to use We'll be creating a curved edge by using a few objects and grouping them together. This is an easy way to make a rounded edge. So if we want our edge to look like this, we need to start with a simple cube or box as it's called in Tinkercad. We then need to add a cylinder to the work plane too. After we have the cylinder on the work plane, we then need to change its properties a little. The first thing we need to change is the side. At the moment, the cylinder looks like a little jagged um, or boxy. The way to fix this is by increasing the amount of sides. So we're best changing that to the biggest number that we can, which is 64. After we do that, I'm going to change the dimensions of the cylinder by selecting the white square in the work plane and change the number to 5, both for the length and the width. The reason for changing this is because I don't want it to be a big addition to my cube and you'll keep the height the same. After we do that, we need to change the cylinder color to transparent so that the next step is a lot easier. We do this by selecting the color option and selecting transparent in the bottom right of the color options. The next step is to move the cylinder over to one of the corners of the cube, either vertically or we can rotate the cylinder and move it over horizontally. If you aren't sure how to rotate an object, check out our rotating objects in Tinkercad video or keep watching for the second method. With the cylinder being transparent, we can move the middle dotted line over until it lines up perfectly with the corner line of the cube. And we might want to look from the top so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at. A tip for doing this more accurately, instead of using your mouse or trackpad, is by using the arrow keys when you get close on your keyboard. It moves it in one millimeter increments. So now that the cylinder is in place, all that is left to do is add a couple of additional cuboids to both faces of the cube where the cylinder is touching. To do this, we need to add another cube and then just reduce the width to five millimeters because that's how much we've added. The height and length um, can stay the same. Then all we have to do is drag the cuboid over to the face of the cube and cover a portion of the cylinder. You can see that our rounded edge is already starting to take shape. You might notice that the cuboid doesn't join up perfectly with the cylinder. This can be adjusted by changing the snap grid in the bottom right from one millimeter to 0.5 millimeters. Then make adjustments with your arrow keys. It really is a lot easier with the arrow keys. After you've done this, you can just duplicate the cuboid by either Control and C, then Control V, or selecting that object and then Control D. Then rotate it and line up like this. Once you have it all lined up, select all objects and then either use Control G or select group and there you have it, a rounded edge. Simple. Now for method two. 
Now, the first method is a bit fiddly, in my opinion. Uh, it might not be for you. Um, and I found the method I am about to show you a lot easier and a lot quicker. As well as it being easier, I find it gives you more margin for error. So we start with the same way with a cube on the work plane and then add a cylinder like last time. This time, however, we're going to need a second cube that is the same size as the original cube. After we have our three objects, we need to change the properties of our cylinder just like we did in the first method. However, we don't need to change the size of the cylinder, just the sides and segments. So 64 for the sides and max on the segments. After we have adjusted this, then we need to make the cylinder a whole instead of solid and transparent. Next, we need to line up the middle of the cylinder to a corner of the second cube, just like we did in the first method. This time, instead of joining, you'll notice that the cylinder cuts a section of the cube, creating a curved internal edge. So now that we have an internal curved edge, we need to change this new object so that we can create an external curve on the first cube. This part is really easy. To do this, all you need to do is change the property of our new object from solid to whole. Once this is done, you can bring the curve section over to a corner of the cube. And what we want to do here is line up the middle of the whole object with the corner of the cube, just like we did for the cylinder. Just like we did for the cylinder earlier. Remember, you might need to change the snap grid from one millimeter to 0 0.5 for this part and use your arrow keys to make sure it's nice and accurate. Now everything is in place and lined up, we can now group the two objects together and hey presto, we have our curved edge on our cube. If you use the second method, a top tip for you is if you are going to use it more than once or you might want to use it later on, make a duplicate of it before you use it for the first time. That way, if you change your mind or want to add another curve that is similar, you already have a spare or a master, I guess, file or copy which means that you don't have to copy the whole process again by making a new one. You can just copy and paste from that one. You've got the side and use it as many times as you want and you're not wasting your time. I know that some of you are thinking, well, why doesn't Tinkercad have an option where you can select the edge of the object and it allows you to just adjust the bevel of a single edge or the chamfer. Um, I wish I knew the answer. I think it might be because if you want to be more technical about um, bevels and the edges of shapes, um, you can import your design into Fusion 360 where those options are easily available and are very common. But that is a more advanced um, feature and a more advanced software. And this is really for beginners, so they probably don't want to add too many features to confuse new learners. That's just my opinion, who knows? Who knows what up updates might happen in the future? For now though, these are some of the best methods that we have for making curved or rounded edges. I hope this video has been useful for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, tell me in the comments below, what is the easiest method you have found for creating curved edges? Is it something completely different or have you used one of these methods before? Again, thanks for watching and enjoy creating on Tinkercad.